Hello everybody, coming back at y'all with another Commander Tips video. Last week I believe we did Karametra God of Harvests. This time we're doing another God, Phoenix God of Deception was a close one. Had to choose between Sigarda Host of Herons. I just think that Phoenix is a little bit more interesting. And I can go into depth about what he does because he's not as subjective as Sigarda can be. There are many different ways that you can take her. Phoenix is a little bit more focused around the mill strategy. But there are different ways that you can mill with this deck. It's going to be focusing on creatures with high toughness or just creatures that are really good with tapping and untapping. There are a lot of good things that you can do, take advantage of. So if you're unfamiliar, he's a 4-7 in Demir Colors, legendary enchantment creature god. He's indestructible like all of them are. Even in enchantment form, they're indestructible enchantments so they're fantastic. Your opponents have to find exiling removal or else they're just helpless against them. Even as an enchantment, he's still going to make it to where creatures you control have an activated ability where they tap and then target player puts the top X cards of their library into their graveyard where X is that creature's toughness. But if he himself is a creature, it's going to count for 7. So you can mill an opponent for 7. That is really fun. Mill isn't my favorite strategy to go off of because there's so many decks that just get around it with Eldrazi, whatever cards they have that shuffle themselves back into the library along with the graveyard. Those usually end those strategies pretty quickly. But if you're just looking for big butts, it's really easy to find them. Defender, creatures that have insanely high toughness to make up for the fact that they can't really attack such as tree of perdition also does something pretty good with life loss but that's not as relevant in this deck we care more about just milling them out or a creature that is able to attack consuming aberration but for the fact that you can make him massive that's going to also mean a massive toughness that you can then tap also a good thing that it gets bigger equal to the number of cards in your opponent's graveyards so that that number is just going to keep increasing but yeah probably the most boring thing that you can do is just just throw in a random defender like wall of frost not saying that it's bad but just getting good value high toughness seems to be the easiest way to play this deck especially if you're on a budget they don't cost that much i like things that are a little bit more unique especially if we're going with mill you have a lot of unique things that you can do i don't just want to play these good defenders that maybe saw some play unlimited i want to play cards like frank sanity that are hilarious and yes it is very focused on one player but it is also satisfying to kind of play arch enemy at times but one of the more unique things that i like to do whenever i consider this deck and I have considered it multiple times, is taking advantage of the Inspired Trigger, which I wish they made more of these because there's really only two cards that are viable in this deck, and that is King Makar the Gold Cursed and Disciple of Deceit. Disciple of Deceit, whenever it becomes untapped, you may discard a non-land card. If you do, you search your library for a card with the same converted mana cost as that card. Reveal it and put it into your hand. That is a really good trigger. The downside of this card is that you would normally have to attack with it, which is why that's such a good trigger. But the good thing in this deck is that you don't have to attack. You have a reason to tap her without having to attack. So that untap with Inspire is fantastic. And King Makar is basically removal that also gives you free mana. So both of these Inspire triggers are really abusable with Phoenix because you don't have to attack to get them. So if they ever want to make Inspired a thing again, if we ever return to Theros, can't wait to see what else we could do with that. But that's just insane. And not to mention, we haven't even talked about one of the most abused cards in this format, Paradox Engine. Whenever you cast a spell, you untap all non-land permanents you control. This also includes Mana Rocks. So if you have a way to draw cards in addition to milling your opponents, you could potentially draw into more cards, untapping your Mana Rocks, anything like that. That, so you have more mana to use to cast those spells and then untapping your creatures that are also milling your opponents out making it easier to hit all of your opponents and the same thing goes with intruder alarm while it's not as easily abused getting to untap all of your creatures that are also milling your opponents out even if it is your opponent's creatures even if they feel like they don't want to play any creatures because they're afraid of that trigger it's still a great excuse to play it we haven't even talked about other creatures that are just crazy that can untap themselves such as e of the Dead, and my personal favorite card that I have a ton of promo versions of, Endbringer. Both of these can untap multiple times, not just your untap step, but either on their own off of their activated ability, such as Eater of the Dead, or just being able to untap during each other untap step. So you have more cards that you can mill off of, and Eater of the Dead can basically win you the game, depending on what's in your opponent's graveyards. Late game is probably the best time to play it. It will win you the game almost a guarantee. 
so long as your opponents have enough creature cards in their graveyards that'll probably do it but something that can slowly grind your opponents away like endbringer isn't bad either and i have to mention because i don't really know why this card is still under five dollars maybe because cons is just that popular of a set so many people opened it but altar of the brood is just ridiculously overpowered in commander if you have any sort of combo that can get permanents on the battlefield at a ridiculous rate altar of the brood is a win con it's only one mana it sits on the field not as easy to remove as a creature and what it does is just craziness as early as turn one and you can just build off of that for the rest of the game just a ridiculous card and something you should be playing if you want to consider this deck or just any mill deck it doesn't have to be phoenix but anyway guys that's basically the gist of the deck play good blue black stuff in addition to other good mill creatures legendary creature options it all works out pretty well together you just want to take advantage of untapping and tapping those creatures and there are many many more cards that can do that really well hope that if you were not already convinced to play this commander that now you are give him a shot i think he's a pretty fun and entertaining mill commander and one of my personal favorites as always you guys have a wonderful day void here signing off see you all next video